Well, we're out in front of a soybean field right now, but in a lot of wheat fields around the country, farmers are already starting to run soil tests. And even if you're not ready to soil test in your farm, you at least need to understand what the key factors are when you do your soil testing this fall. Now, last week we talked about soil pH. This week we're going to talk about base saturation. Well, throughout the year, uh, whether it's summer or winter, whenever, I get a lot of soil samples to look at. A lot of farmers will say, hey, can you look at my soil sample and, and see what you think? And invariably, if there's something that's left off the soil sample, it's base saturation. And I say, wait a minute, where's your base saturation test? And the farmer says, oh, you know, that cost another five bucks to run. I didn't think it was that important. It is that important. It's really not that much more to run a base saturation test. In, in many cases, complete samples can be run for around $30. So it's not a huge expense. Okay, here, But you need to have some good data to be able to work Yeah, with. and here's what base saturation is. It is a factor of five key nutrients in soils and a ratio of one to the other. So here are the five nutrients. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and hydrogen. Those five nutrients and this base saturation will be expressed as a percentage. Our range, by the way, let's run through the ranges for each of these nutrients. Calcium, we'd like to see on your base saturation, 65 to 80 percent. That's what we're shooting for. With magnesium, we would like that number to be somewhere in the 12 to 25 percent range. With potassium, we want that to be in the 4 to 8 percent range. Sodium should be less than 1 percent. Hydrogen should be less than 10%. Well, with all those nutrients, they're important, but let's break them down one at a time. With calcium, that is a large size molecule. And in your soil, we like to see lots of calcium, 65 to 80%, because we want those big particles out there. We want air to be able to move around in the soil. And when you've got more calcium, you typically have soils that breathe a little bit. Uh, There's they, more pore space down there. The roots can get through, the oxygen can get through, the moisture can get through. That's a good thing. Magnesium is on the other side. That's yeah. the small <laughs> molecule. Well, we've got some soils where we've got really high magnesium levels, even 40 and 50 percent magnesium. And if you're in that situation too, I can tell you exactly what you're dealing with. Magnesium's small, they pack together, it gets really tight. So magnesium can be a problem if you have too much of it. And obviously, if you don't have enough magnesium, you need to fertilize with some, depending on where you're at in the country. Okay with potassium, that's the number one reason on our farm why we have found base saturation to be so important on the soil test, and I'll tell you why. Soils in our particular area in the Midwest have lots of potassium naturally. The problem is we also have lots of calcium and lots of magnesium. So when you look at the ratio of potassium to everything else, it actually looks kind of small. So even though parts per million, we might have 200 parts per million, which some labs and universities will tell you, oh, 200 parts per million, you're in good shape on potassium. You know what? That's not necessarily true. If your calcium and magnesium levels are so high and your base saturation percentage, in other words, the ratio of potassium to everything else is less than 4%, you don't have enough potassium out there. It is absolutely limiting your yield. You've got to get that potassium number up into the 4 to 8% range. Otherwise, you will be deficient on your potassium levels when you run plant tissue analysis. There are two other nutrients on base saturation that we need to talk about as well. And both of those we want to see really low numbers, if anything, on base saturation. Those are sodium, which we'd like to see at 0 to 1 percent at the most. If you've got too much sodium, chances are you've been over applying manure, which contains a lot of salt, or you've got a drainage issue so the salts in your soil can't flush out like they normally so would. So either of those problems are simple to fix. Quit applying so much manure or add tile to your ground, do something to improve surface drainage, whatever, improve your drainage. And hydrogen as well, we'd like to see that in the 0 to 10 percent range. And we'd prefer 0 because when you see a 10 percent hydrogen show up on a base set Saturation. I can tell you almost exactly where your soil pH is. It's right about 6.2 or 6.3 in most cases. When you get that pH below 6.3 or 6.2, it starts to get down in the upper fives, something like that, real low sixes, you're going to see that hydrogen percent go up. The reason why, when you're talking about acids, most acids have got hydrogen there, like sulfuric acid, for example, has sulfur and hydrogen. 
two parts of hydrogen. So if you've got excess hydrogen in your soil, you probably have acids and you probably have a low soil pH. So just put some lime out there to raise that pH and you'll watch that hydrogen percentage on your base saturation go down. Well, once again, this base saturation thing is really important. It's five different nutrients. We're looking at the ratio of all of them to each other. We want to see your calcium levels pretty high. We'd like to see your potassium levels relatively high. With magnesium, it depends on what area of the country you're in. In our area, we've got lots of magnesium naturally in the soil. So we're yeah, we'd, actually... we'd love to share it with you. <laughs> right. If, if so... we could just blend, that'd be good. Yeah, so we're actually <laughs> trying to get our magnesium levels down, but in other areas of the country, or especially if you have sandier soils, you probably need to add some magnesium to get it up to, say, that 12% minimum level. Again, with sodium and hydrogen, those are the ones we want low. It doesn't matter what area of the country you're in, you want those levels low. What we're talking about with soil tests here is base saturation. It's very important to run a complete test that also includes base saturation so you know what to do to manage your soils for fertility. But you also need to manage your soils for weeds. And we'll show you how to control this tough weed coming up next.